Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Server meshing tests are ramping up. The Overdrive event has a new mission. There is a sneak peek at a new ship, the Raptor, and we have the summary of the latest Star Citizen Live where they talked more on Star Citizen Alpha 3.23's character creator updates. Let's take a look at the newsletter though and the stuff that's happening with the Overdrive event. Urgent assistance required. While last week's data heist was successful, Xenothreat is using a sophisticated encryption system that the CDF can't decipher, except the Overdrive Initiative Priority Targets mission in your contracts manager to help the cause. So yes, there's a new mission uh, chain set uh, with the uh, second set of missions priority targets from the CDF now you basically you're hunting down high-ranking Xeno threat members and recovering their digital keys the whole overdrive initiative set of missions um, should be running all the way into May and all previous and subsequent phases should also be available to complete until around then we've got the data heist missions as well at the moment and players will be able to earn themselves three days rental of a F7A Mark II, so that military Hornet, and a free F7C Mark II to um, F7A upgrade by completing all the stages of the event. So there's reasons to get involved and play that, but obviously you don't have to have FOMO about getting into it. Like immediately, you'll be able to play it sort of all the way up into May as far as I am aware. Also, CIG, they've been playing around with the tech preview channel. So there is a sort of second wave BTU test uh, with this. So more people have been invited to participate in trying out server meshing. So at the moment, um, CIG are now testing two servers linked together in the same star system. So Stanton, there's around 400 players connected, bam can server meshing, static server meshing work with that, sort of dividing parts of the Stanton system up. Previously, they had connected Stanton and Pyro together, but each of those um, star systems was a single server. But we do know that static server meshing works. Um, it's going to be interesting to see um, sort of how they now proceed because those tests seem to have worked to a large level. Obviously, there's bugs and lots of other stuff going on. Um, it's sort of an early tests with server meshing but i'm expecting them to keep on ramping up we'll probably see four servers connecting both stanton and pyro together or loads more servers in a single star system next yeah so they're, they're going to keep on keep on doing that keep on evolving those tests and get involved if you can something else worth mentioning stuff for tuna is still running until the 26th of March. You can earn a little challenge flare coin achievement and you actually get a, a piece of flare for coming top in the winning team in the um, special arena commander mode for Stella Fortuna. If you're so interested, uh, sort of jump in and do that. Now, this is really cool and really interesting, but we don't have much information on it. There is a sneak peek of a new ship coming to Star Citizen, which appears to be the Raptor. Now, it's because uh, the, the sort of tagline was Clever Girl, which is Jurassic Park, ra Raptor scene. Don't have much on the ship yet. It, it could be it could be any manufacturer as well. It's probably going to be released during May's Fleet Week. It almost certainly with a name like Raptor is a combat ship. And it's probably small to medium in size. But, I mean, those are a lot of I reckons rather than I knows. Really interested to know what you think that ship is or could be and its sort of role and all that sort of stuff and manufacturer. We also had a summary of the Star Citizen Live Q&A character customizer, basically following on from the previous week's um, Inside Star Citizen about the character customizer. So let's go through what the devs said here and the questions that were asked. Is the character customizer going to bring more heads? All heads that have been in the Persistent Universe previously will be there. Some new ones are going to be there, but they're still polishing some face rigs of others, and they're working on 60 more heads as uh, they continue to progress through development. They've also given facelifts, increased skin detail, updated skin tones, balanced maps um, and various other bits and bobs to make those heads that we currently have look a lot better. They can also apply skin tones over any skin texture. You're going to have a lot to customize. Where will we be able to customize our characters? Will it be the menu only or can we change it in game? At launch it will be through the character customizer only when you create your character but they want to give you the option later to update your look when you're in game in the future. Uh, will these characters be wiped as well with future updates or will they be saved and persistent? The characters will be saved through future updates 
but no promise, as we might need to reset depending on issues that arise. You will, however, be able to export and import your customized characters through the new feature that they are going to be added in 3.23. So you'll basically have a code for your character or, or be able to save it in some way, and that will then be able to be loaded in or shared with other people. Will we be able to change the facial expressions, scene settings, and lighting in the review tab? Using character creators in general, I often found myself creating a beautiful tune just to learn how ugly it looks once it's placed into the actual game. Um, they said no promises. It's technically doable though. And we will also keep the FOIP animations. So obviously when you're looking at your camera and doing silly faces, that's what your character will attempt to do. Uh, will beards use star hair? Definitely the full beards will have a degree of motion and collision with the chest. Amazing. Um, is it possible to have very long hair? We have to limit the hair length from a technical point of view to the shoulders is our maximum to minimize clipping and issues with gameplay and helmets. By 3.23 you will be able to choose long hair, put a hat and helmet or cap on, and the asset, your hair, will be replaced with a new asset. Still your hair, but you know, you've got headwear on, so that will affect the way your hair looks. Your hairstyle is important, so they want to make sure that this is a cool feature to automatically have your hair neatly packed when using any headwear. Can I dye a single hair strand? No, but we do allow players to do a lot of stuff with hair, like dyeing the root uh, from the tip end and various other options as well. What can you tell us about the features beyond 3.23 in regards to the character customizer? There's going to be more variety like mohawks, dreadlocks and more. We want to release these themed with updates. For example, with Pyro, it would be more themed with piratey hairstyles and lawlessness. If there's a specific style that you would like to see, let them know on Twitter and Spectrum. Body type. Heights, sizes, what can you tell us about the different body sizes, shapes, tall, short, etc. It's a difficult problem to solve. Body shape customization is technically doable, but it would impact a lot of gameplay, clothes, clipping, attachments. It would affect all the animations in game, causing a lot of issues. I agree, having everyone the same shape doesn't look right, but we'll investigate with what we can do. In the future, will the character customizer be able to scan an imported photo of our own face to generate it into the customizer? That would be helpful and quicker than creating our own face from scratch. Face sculpting would be awesome, though it's a lot of work to do. They're going to talk about it more internally. Will we be able to customize the color of our eyes? In 3.23, it will be pretty standard, but we want to offer more diverse eye colors. For now, it's realistic and it might be revisited later. I would personally really like to see eye color changes and some interesting sort of color blending options and stuff that would, would go pretty well. I suppose maybe we'll have contacts and stuff like that in game. But yeah, I am really interested to know what you think of that new character customizer and what they're talking about for 3.23. I'm loving it. I want to see it propagated out to NPCs. I want to see a huge amount of variety in the game. It really does help landing zones come to life and gives you more sort of a more interesting experience when you're fighting because you're, you're fighting against different people. What do you think that raptor is? What, tell, tell me about what you think CIG could be doing with that, what you'd like to see. Are you participating in the Overdrive initiative? Have you bought yourself a um, F7C Mark II and are hoping to get an F7A upgrade? Are you participating in those server meshing tests as well? And what's the experience been like for you? Are you really, really excited to see server meshing potentially? turn up in summer with 4.0. Whatever your thoughts or questions though, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Also, Toby Eye Tracker is available with a discount. Links below to that as well. Let me set you a riddle. You have a fox, a chicken, and a sack of corn, and you have to transport them from one side of the river to the other using a rowing boat. You can only carry one of these with you back and or forth. You can't leave the chicken and the fox together. That's mad. Nor can the chicken be left with the grain, nor all three together without you. How do you do it? With NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. Turn that bad boy on and just set your location to the other side of the river. Done. Not only do you have all your wares, but also you can get around regional content blocks, have your data encrypted for more security. It's easy to toggle on and off. It's non-invasive. It helps you with other riddles as well. If a sphinx is asking you, what goes on four legs in the morning, two at noon, and three legs in the evening? NordVPN, get it now from the links below. 
every month we have a giveaway for a ship, and for March we are giving away an Argo raft with persistent hangars, freight elevators, and hauling missions coming with Alpha 3.23. What better way to experience that type of gameplay than with your own hauler? All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of our videos made during the month. A single comment per video counts, so get involved with watching all my videos for more chances to win. There's more details in the description. Also, I won't ask you to contact me on Telegram or anything like that. This is my only YouTube account I will use to talk in my comments as well. Occasionally there are scammers about, I don't want people to get tricked. A massive thank you to everyone that supports the channel. Be that liking videos, commenting on them, sharing them. There are also people that go the extra mile. These are amazing people that become Patreons or use the join button under my YouTube videos to become channel members. You'll occasionally get some exclusive content, Discord roles and behind the scenes posts. It's those people with those memberships that allow us to make the daily Star Citizen content that we do. So please consider joining those awesome folks as well. Thank you for watching until the very end. It is genuinely appreciated and I hope you have a great March.